On the last page of Ghani's autobiography, he writes, but I know that I have still before me a difficult passage of us. I must reduce myself to zero. More than a message left by him for us, the readers, I think of that as a reminder for himself, a mantra of which he should forever recall, the need to be in a constant stage of reevaluation to be able to rethink and relearn his concepts. Because at the end of every day, that is what really makes us, us, the beauty of being in a forever stage of reevaluation to be able to break out of our own limits. Because truly, there's nothing more human than to have no limits. Welcome, my name is Rodrigo, and today I'll present about the human necessity to change perspective. But of course, like many others, Ghani's point of view stood from a very high vantage point. He's one of those people that we think we only aspire to become. And I thought the same. My passion for that type of greatness has always been inside me. I wanted to be one of those people that reality seems to, to bend towards. The only difference is, is that I allowed that feeling to take, to take control of me. I kept telling myself that these people, they were born different. They were born to be good. They were born to be brilliant. They were born to be smart. If I wanted to be like them, there was only two ways. Either I was born great, or I had to work harder than anyone else. Unfortunately for me, I shifted my perspective to expect greatness out of me regarding all logic, because I thought that I was born like them. Because perspective, or better yet, lack thereof, lack thereof, really comes from a place of negligence more than from ignorance. A place of reinventing and rethinking. The problem extended itself to a point that I tried to come up with my own theory. And not just any theory, mind you, but my take on the beginning of the freaking universe. After completion, I sent that over to any major new organiza and, uh, space organization that I could find. Sure that that would be my moment. Several months later, and I got my first and only reply coming from NASA. It was one of the proudest moments of my life to be able to grasp on that paper and proudly read, thank you for sending your mail. We'll read it if we can. Congratulations and keep on reaching for the stars. <laughs> Luckily for me, I was held back by one of my teachers that apparently didn't share my amazing 15-year-old views on one of the biggest mysteries of the human universe, which proceeded to commonly say the following sentence for me. But don't you think that that letter from NASA was kind of auto-generated? That was where it all clicked for me. That was the moment that I knew it was true. That was the universe reducing me to zero before I could do it to myself. I came home frightened that day, not just because I had to reinvent my school project, no, but because I had to reinvent myself. I need to know what I stood for. So I tried to find answers in books. I started to read every day and every night that I could until I came across a science book by the name of Human Universe, written by Brian Cox on Contrary to Gandhi's. In its first pages, it declares a very nice concept that it can be best summarized to. I live in this street, at my neighborhood, at my city of Liverpool, at a country called England, in a planet called Earth, in a solar system. More than just an everyday quote, this, for me, is the other piece of the puzzle. That is him reducing his ideas to zero, then gradually expanding upon it until he reaches absolutely infinity. That, for me, is our first hint at how to create perspective. See, like Gandhi, we should always reduce ourselves to zero and have a current understanding of our current perspectives. But these baby steps is what really separate us from growth, to be able to understand and augment the limits of our own views. Because the creation of perspective is not about throwing our ideas and concepts away. No, the creation of perspective is about considering the ideas outside of our circle, outside of our own. This brings us to another very important point in our presentation. The, in and of itself, importance of perspective. Because the way that we react to things is extremely dependent on the way that we look at them. The circumstances of our daily basis are all natural, but the way that we process them is what defines our character. So, in a way, perspective is really intertwined with our character. Take this quote from none other than the great Neil deGrasse Tyson. 
on which he states, I already knew I wanted to become a scientist, but that afternoon I learned from Carl the kind of person that I wanted to become. Because perspective doesn't always give us a better understanding of our surroundings. Perspectives defines what type of person you want to become. And this is really important in the day that we live in. The era that we live in today is an era of so much information available, and better yet, so much good information and bad information. We have the resurgence of out of date theories and questions of wrong concepts in general. This can lead to a very dangerous thing that is the misspread of knowledge. We reached what was commonly associated to be the rise of the ignorance era. A moment in time where it is more important to have our 15 minutes of fame than to actually deliver credible news source. Take for example, this moment on none other than BBC itself, on which a journalist covering a very basic topic of a viral video of a floating city that appear above the skylines of China. She applied that knowledge to a phenomenon called Fata Morgana, which, in her view, is a type of superior mirage when light bends in the limits of the horizon to create an illusion on top of the object, rather than these puddles that we see on the streets in a very hot summer day. Unfortunately for her, this wasn't true. A YouTuber took, in the span of four minutes, every piece of this video apart and was able to understand how it was actually a computer-generated image rather than a real phenomenon. This reliable source and that journalist didn't bother to read four lines down of Wikipedia. She does create perspective and she creates also the other perspectives. This can prompt their listeners to questions that can be as good as bad themselves. Questions like, if that city was real, then what else could be real? And if that is fake, then what else could be fake? This can lead to the misspread of knowledge, a type of thought that cannot really hold because it has no substantial ground. Granted, this isn't the only problem with perspective. We also have a, a problem that is pretty inherent in all of us. That is the illusion of perspective to think that we have all the information available to us and stop reconsidering our own views of the world. Take for example, the very famous study case of Blockbuster. Blockbuster CEO sat down with his associates to discuss a new strategy in a business meeting. His associate came up and asked him to go digital. He suggested that change because this type of change really can put another market into the blockbuster into the blockbuster market. Unfortunately for him, this CEO answered with, I have more than 2,000 stores open in America only. Do you really think that I need to tap into a new market? And again, once again, unfortunately for him, that assistant, that associate, became the CEO of Netflix and blockbuster filed for bankruptcy in 2010. By not considering the views of others, we fail at expanding our own universe. Think of what it could be of the political landscape without Guernica. Think of what it could be of science if Newton's mentor hadn't invested in his work. Think of what it could be of this presentation without Gandhi's perspective. This can also lead to our very last point of this presentation, that of which the importance of asking the right questions. Take for example this. We have always thought that we were alone in the universe. I mean, it's quite easy to see why. If we run the math, it's quite objective. Take the number of planets that have life in them, which is a finite number because we know that there are planets that cannot house life as we know it, and divide it by the number of planets that exist, which is in an infinite number. The result is a number so bafflingly close to zero that might as well just be us. That wasn't until a scientist by the name of Frank Drake came up with his own equations to explain this. He started by asking general questions. How many solar systems does exist? How many planets can they house? 
How many of those planets have life? How many of these lives are intelligent? Drake's equations completes our cycle. It's the last piece of our puzzle. He began by reducing his ideas and what he thought of the world to zero, then gradually expanded upon it until he reduces once more, changing his perspectives and also the world. That is the end.